was encouraging that uh, and uh, he, uh, the, you know, the, the way that he mentioned, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless such a person around the freshness and so on, uh, indicates that this is a very important thing to do. And we talked about uh, the meaning and the implication of that. Uh, so here's another hadith uh, along similar lines. Uh, this one is narrated by Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu. قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من كذب علي متعمدا فليتبوء مقعده من النار. And this is uh, متفق عليه. Uh, in other words, it is narrated by both the Bukhari and Muslim, uh, perhaps in other sources also. Uh, so it's a hadith that is uh, on the peak of uh, authenticity. So what is it that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم says here? He says, Man kadaba alayya muta'ammidan Whoever tells a lie on me deliberately Fal yatabawwa maka'adahu minan na'ar Let him prepare his abode in hellfire. And so, uh, a brief explanation of that uh, is that uh, once you know that a hadith, uh, a particular hadith is not authentic uh, it is not acceptable, you should not transmit it. Whoever tells a lie on me deliberately. So if you know that something is uh, not authentic, you should not transmit it. You should not uh, mention it as if it is a hadith. Uh, we have to be careful about what we transmit from the Prophet Because everything that the Prophet said or did is law for us. It is law, it is guidance for us. It is part of the Islamic teachings, it is something that we can act upon. As long as we know that it is authentic, we can act upon it, we can do something you know, to change our lives by acting upon it. So it is very important to transmit the hadith of the Prophet and correctly. And if we know something is not authentic, we should not be transmitting it. Uh, and the scholars have said that the only reason for uh, transmitting a hadith that is not authentic is to point out that it is not authentic. That's the only reason for doing that. And that, that is why the scholars did that, right? They, they regarded the, whatever was uh, said that the Prophet said or did, uh, they regarded all of that in order for, me, for us again, to know that it is, whether it is authentic or not, right? So, um, don't uh, point to the scholars and say they transmitted the hadith, uh, you know, uh, hadith that are not authentic. There is a very important reason for them to do that. That is the point of the us. Uh, these are hadith that are weaker, that are not authentic. Uh, so the key word here is mutaammidan, uh, deliberately. Uh, transmitting a hadith uh, that you know to be authentic. You know, deliberately, you know that it is not authentic uh, and you transmit that. So uh, this rules out there for uh, a person who uh, might be trying to uh, tr transmitting a hadith and he doesn't recall the exact words and so on, but maybe he knows the meaning, he understands the meaning of it, and he tries to, to tra transmit it uh, as accurately as possible. Maybe he doesn't get the exact words or so, but he uh, and he makes a, a mistake, and a person who makes a mistake here and there. So may not. Take a person who doesn't uh, recall the exact words can say transmitted by meaning. A person who forgets, um, uh, the, you know, he's also excused. You know, other, other hadiths that say that there are some things that the old man is excused for, and one of it uh, is forgetfulness, you know, do something, uh, you know, forgetfully. Uh, uh, so, what one who knows, one who is you know, clear that this is, uh, this is not authentic. As if uh, it is a hadith of the Prophet saying say something that he is supposed to have said or something that he is supposed to have done. And you say it as if he said it, as if uh, he, he did it. Uh, so that uh, position uh, would be wrong. Uh, and we have in our history, Islamic history, unfortunately, many people transmitting a hadith that are not authentic. Uh, and some people doing it deliberately also, some people doing it deliberately. Uh, and perhaps they had good intentions, in some cases they had good intentions. 
so a person who was discovered uh, to have fabricated hadith. Fabricated means what? Uh, that he made up hadith. He made up hadith. And he said that the Prophet وسلم, said so and so. But he knew it was a lie because the he himself made up the hadith, right? Um, maybe encouraging some good act, something good to do, right? Whether it's performing salah, coming to the masjid, you know, any, any, any good deed. Uh, and when he was discovered, the scholars confronted him and said, why did you do that? Why did you fabricate all of this hadith? Uh, he says, uh, no, I did not tell a lie on the Prophet Sallallahu Ma kadabtu ala Rasulullah ala, right? The word ala. I did not tell a lie on, uh, uh, which means against the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ala kadabtu lahu. You know, I, I told a lie for him, but not against him, not on him. For him. You know, that is uh, to propagate, you know, what he was teaching. To remind people of what he was teaching and so on. <laughs> Uh, and to encourage them to do these, these good acts. Is that acceptable? Is it acceptable for you to say, the Prophet وسلم, said that he was converted into Salah, for example. And you don't know of a hadith like that. You've never read of, uh, of it in a book or you know, heard it from any scholar or so. So you just start it up for, your, for, your, for yourself. Maybe this will encourage people. To come, uh, and of course, you know, Muslims do respond uh, to what the Prophet Sallallahu said, right? We, we, uh, many of us do that, right? Automatically we respond. The Prophet Sallallahu said this, and therefore I, uh, I should do it. So this person uh, makes up a hadith, or you, you, you think, okay, I can encourage people uh, to come early to the masjid and so on, because, you know, uh, the way I, I, in which I will do it is to fabricate a hadith. Uh, that the Prophet said that. Maybe he did, I, I, I don't know. There may be hadith about that, they were coming or whatever, right? But uh, if you don't know, you don't know a, of a hadith like that. Uh, and you just made up these words and you said, that this is what the Prophet said. So is that acceptable? No, it is not acceptable. You're not telling, you're, you're not telling a lie for the Prophet. This is also a lie against the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's a lie on the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You're doing it deliberately. So, man kathaba alayya muta'ambinan. Whoever tells a lie on me deliberately, fal yatabawwa maka'adamu minan nar. Let him prepare his abode in his fire. In other words, um, uh, you know, some uh, uh, scholars interpreted it to mean that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prepared for that person uh, his abode in hellfire. Anybody who tells a lie on the Prophet Allah has prepared his abode, his place of dwelling in hellfire. There's already, that is there for him waiting. Uh, so, let him you know, prepare his abode, meaning, meaning to say Allah has prepared it and he should just expect to go there, to be thrown into hellfire. And that's where he's going to be. Uh, so, uh, you know, this hadith, uh, like the previous one, in a way it encourages us uh, to transmit a hadith from the Prophet but be accurate about it, right? We should not tell a, a, a lie. And, you know, if we are unsure about something, uh, about the hadith, then go and check it out first before you transmit it, before you, you, you say say that this is a hadith from the Prophet Sallallahu Once you are unsure, uh, and it would also be good uh, to uh, perhaps uh, know the, uh, 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 do some research on the uh, chain of narrators. You know, uh, what, what is the source that it comes from? Bukhari and Muslim? Okay, we can basically accept any hadith uh, that comes in those two sources, as, as this one, the Mutafakun Alayhi. Uh, other books of hadith, so we have to be a bit more careful. Uh, we, we have to you know, do a, a little bit of research uh, to see what the scholars have said about it. If they said it's authentic and so on, uh, then go ahead. Because now we are sure that it is an authentic hadith from the Prophet of Adam, go ahead and transmit it. Go ahead and say, speak it. Uh, tell people about it, or remind people about their Islamic duties using a hadith and so on. And maybe it will have a greater impact uh, than if you were to just say, you know, 
without quoting a hadith, that this is something that a Muslim you should be doing. But if you said, Qala oh, Rasulullah um, sallam, you know, the Prophet sallam said so and so, uh, this may have a greater impact. Uh, uh, one of the things that uh, narrators of hadith, uh, and especially you know, the data scholars, not the scholars who are researching hadith and compiling them and so on, but the scholars, you know, who have taken uh, hadith from those earlier scholars, uh, it has many hadith, and if you're not sure about the wording, uh, we, we have to be sure about the meaning, right? That the meaning is authentic. But if we are not sure about the, the, the wording of it, uh, when we say, Qala Rasulullah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, we should add something like, uh, kama qal, or as he said, you know, something like this. He said something like this, right? The Prophet Sallallahu said so and so, how come I'm God? Or, you know, whatever words he used, whatever he said, right? Uh, so you're indicating that you, maybe you don't recall the exact words. And these may be the words, uh, but they may not be also, except that you are sure that this, the meaning is correct and that's what you are uh, giving to the people. You're transmitting that. Uh, it is permissible, the uh, scholars have uh, talked about this, and we talked about it uh, last Sunday also, uh, that it is permissible to transmit the uh, hadith, uh, you know, as long as you have the meaning correct, right? Using different words, you may not recall the exact words, it is permissible, and, and you see that very often, the two hadith that have the same meaning, uh, the, the wording might be different, and so on. Uh, so we can do that as long as we are sure about the meaning. Uh, so these things, uh, you know, they, these kind of teachings that you know, our scholars, our alumni have discussed, uh, you know, I think they have great relevance for us today. We find a lot of uh, fabricated hadith uh, in circulation. And not only that, uh, you, you would think that uh, that is ended, the fabrication of hadith is ended, all that we have in the books that the scholars have compiled earlier. Uh, those are all their hadith, whether authentic or not authentic. No, that is not so. Up to today, there are people who are fabricating hadith. We have to be careful. We all also kind of want to have a guy. Yes? Amin. Yeah, yeah. So if you, if you find that out, that so it is weak. You should find out. Yes. Yeah, yes. 